Welcome everyone to part 11 of the web development in Python with Django. We all know that whatever page we are creating where we have users, there is a rule that we must have trusted protection to keep our users' data safe. So in this part, I'll talk about Google reCAPTCHA, a top-rated solution to protect your application or website against bots or spam. While creating this tutorial, I understood that it's reasonably over effortless to implement this tool that we're gonna use right now. So in this tutorial, you'll find a solution that might take you only 5 to 10 minutes to implement Google reCAPTCHA in your own Django website. While we can implement Google reCAPTCHA manually with the help of HTML, Python and JavaScript, I found out that the easiest solution is to use a third-party library making the process much faster and simpler. Because we are using Google reCAPTCHA, it's obvious that our website will make a post request in the backend. It's clear that we need to register somewhere and get some access key. The first thing it's necessary to do is to register your site on reCAPTCHA admin console. So let's go to this page, uh, the CAPTCHA. I already logged in with my own personal Gmail. So what we do first, in the label section, I create a name that would represent where uh, I will use it. So right now I'm creating a reCAPTCHA tutorial simply because that's my tutorial. As a reCAPTCHA type, I chose to use a reCAPTCHA v2 because I found this works out of the box. I also tried v3, but I faced some issues, so I decided not to waste too much time and continue with version 2. In terms of security, it's very similar to v3. From here, I chose to use the I am a robot a checkbox because we want to use a checkbox where users will add a tick. Another option is the invisible reCAPTCHA badge and that's a little bit more complicated. The invisible reCAPTCHA badge doesn't require the users to click on the checkbox. Instead, it invokes directly when the user clicks on the existing button on your site or can be invoked via the JavaScript API call. The integration requires a JavaScript callback when reCAPTCHA verification is complete. By default, only the most suspicious traffic will be prompted to solve a CAPTCHA. But right now, this tutorial will focus on the, uh, the, the simplest solution, uh, I'm not a robot checkbox. The third solution, reCAPTCHA Android, I'm not sure what it is, but that's not our interest as of now. We And because we are using this on my local machine, I'm here uh, adding a, a localhost IP, if you're using it in production, you'll need to add your domain. Uh, for example, in my example, it would be a pylessons.com because I have my own website that you probably came here through. So if you didn't, you can go check there. There is a plenty of useful tutorials that you might try. And now uh, I, I need to accept the recapture terms of service and I probably might click submit. That's cool. And right now we receive site key and, and, and secret key. I, I don't need to copy this at the moment. We can review them later. So I simply go to analytics. That's cool. We had prepared this on our Google reCAPTCHA admin console. And if I would like to go back, I click here and I'm back. And if I would like to check reCAPTCHA keys, I simply click here. And this, this is exactly what I expected to have. And here we can a little bit move our security from easiest and to the most secure. I can leave most secure for, for instance. That's cool. And right now we can go to back to our code where I finished. And right now, this time I run my server in a debug mode. This is my debug configurations that pretty simple. I, I think it's default one. And I run this. And I, I go back to my, to my machine and here, this is the place where we'd like to add this reCAPTCHA before pressing this login button. As mentioned, we'll use the third part library called Django reCAPTCHA. You might ask, why should we invest the wheel when the, the one already exists? 
that's a rhetorical question that tells us it's better to use what's already been created and existed for a while than to invest our precious time to make the same stuff. Of course, sometimes we want to do this for different reasons, to understand everything better, to learn, to teach, or sometimes we know how to do it better. So we would like to improve it. Uh, this time we go to Django Recapture. That's a, one of the best packages, and it has PyPy, it has GitHub, and if you press, you can navigate here. So we install this fantastic package to our Django project with pip install Django recapture. So I simply copy this, and I go to my project, I open a new window, and I press here pip install Django recapture. Uh, it's already installed, but before that, we need to not forget to add this package into our requirements. So I go back here and simply add it here, so it will exist. If you want to learn more how to use this package or more details, you can head to their GitHub page and get into the detail. Already did that to check if the package is safe to use because of course we are using this for security and so on. So uh, we simply need to be sure that we are not giving any details to some kind of third party. After installation, we go to our settings and we head back that or installed apps where we want to register a new one. And this is called Capture. Okay, let's go back to GitHub page over there and there should be a short instruction how to do everything. And yep, I was looking for this. And while we are there on our settings, we, we, I go to copy these to capture public and private keys. And I go somewhere to my settings, uh, I scroll down and I paste them here. Now I need to copy my own keys that was generated by Google recapture. I open these, I go copy side key, that's a public one. And now I need to copy a secret key. This is the secret. I, of course, I do not recommend to keep these keys here. You always should import them from somewhere. So in case someone would access your website, so they wouldn't be able to get these keys. But for tutorial purposes, it's totally fine to use them. So it will be way easier for you to follow what I'm doing and how to test it by yourself. If you check the Django recapture package documentation, you may see that these keys might be specified as parameter while creating the recapture field. But for simplicity reasons, I'll use it globally in my settings. Um, I'll use the same recapture for registration, login, or even while creating a new comments in my post, then I will be way easier to reuse all of them. Now, our primary goal is to add this recapture field to our, our login page. So bots would be not able to run scripts constantly trying to guess different passwords for specific accounts. To do so, we need to modify our custom user login form. So we head to our Django project, users and forms, where is the forms, here it is, and we need to add imports for a field and widget and to our custom login function. So uh, we start with our imports here. So I, I use our uh, from capture, sorry, catches that it's installed from fields, I import a recapture field. And next, I, I need additional form from capture widgets. Widgets, I import recapture v2 checkbox. Uh, that last thing is to modify our, our user login form. So uh, after the username and password, I simply creating a capture a new name that will that will be equal to recapture to our recapture field and inside of it we'll, we'll use a widget and this widget will be equal to recapture v2 checkbox that we imported already above. If you specified a different type than the v2 checkbox while registering on the admin console, you need to change the widget attribute of recapture field. If you don't specify one, recapture v2 checkbox will be as the default one. 
At the moment, while I'm writing this tutorial, there are three widgets that can be used with a recapture field. So it's recapture v2 checkbox, recapture v2 invisible, and recapture free. The same choices as we saw on the Re Google Recapture admin console. There are also attributes that you might pass to these objects, but you can check their them by yourself on the official documentation okay at the moment we are in a place where it should work already so let's save this and our server should run okay as we can see there it's it is some kind of issue um so i head back to my to the documentation and i guess it, it it definitely should give us give us some kind of explanation Okay, let's search for test key. And that's true. Uh, and this is about local development and functional testing. This, okay, these keys cannot be used in production since they always validated true and our warning will be shown on the recapture. Okay, so uh, that's fine. And for testing purposes, that's fine. So we copy these, we go back to our settings and here I'll add this. And this should solve this error. Yep, it was sold. And now if I go back to my website, I hit refresh. And as you can see, that's amazing. It, it, it works out of the box. I right now can click I'm not a robot. And it, it, I was, I passed it, of course, because I'm not a robot. That's obvious. Let's try to log in with my test. Test. Log in, it, it worked, that's log out. Let's try again if I press test, test, and I try without passing the, this field. And this field is required, it types for me. Well, th that's bad because it's not that informative as we expect, because if there will be, I don't know, uh, 20 fields to fill, for, for example, if it's a form or, or etc., it gives, uh, to less information about this error. So at this point, I need to modify it. To do that, I go to my views where I am logging this message. Where is my views? And now I'll get to this place with my debugger mode. And I go back again and I press test, test and log in. And we were stopped somewhere here. And let's see what errors we have. And well, that's true. We have a capture. This field is required error. And we need to replace this uh, because this comes default with a package. I'm not sure. How, how, maybe there is a better way to replace this, but I thought that I'll do this my own way. This will also show you some, some ways how we can modify things in our side when you're using third party package. So right now I'll use the same stuff, but instead of R, I'll, I'll need to get a key. And to get the keys, I'll need an items, all items, and we'll leave the same loop here. But instead right now, I'll be checking if the key is equal to capture as we saw because if i'll print uh in the debugger oh okay uh i need to bring these maybe as you can see it gave me that it's uh, uh for this right now the key is capture so we use it as this one and and the error is a list so and error we grab a first element of this list. We check if it's equal to this error. And if it is equal, we simply print another error. So this will stay here, but right now I'll create another one. And here I'll type that you must pass the recapture test to validate. Okay. and. Now I'll do a continue because we are sure that we logged this error and if we receive more errors it will come to this place because they might be different. It will be related to a username, to a password or etc. It doesn't matter. It matters of what form you use. Okay. 
So I'll remove this checkpoint and I believe it should work at this moment. I refresh my, my server. If I go back to my website, let's go to my login and let's try to break it out and let test test. That's cool. You must pass the recapture test and it gives this error out of the box. And that's fine. That's exactly what we were expecting. If I press another test test, it works. That's amazing. And if I press log out, and as you said, if we, for example, we have different uh, error, for example, this is a test two and this test, so um login credentials are wrong it gives me a different error so that's exactly what we expected from this website and what i wanted to show you and as you can see this video is really short and really informative and you need only i don't know 10 lines of code to insert into your Django project and you have the capture working and full protection from bots and spams that's about it with the recapture. Hope you can find this useful in our in your own project. Google recapture is a very common and powerful solution to avoid bots, spam, and can also be used to detect brute force attacks on the login page. That's the whole purpose of this tutorial. And uh, I should tell you that you don't hesitate to press the like button share this video, subscribe, comment. If you have any questions, I definitely gonna try to answer you and just really hope you, you, you'll do this because this might help me to grow this channel in the future. So as usual, all the source code is available on my GitHub, GitHub page, so you can try it by yourself. Make sure you register your application to get valid psyche and secret key. I might remove these I used in this tutorial anytime and I'm not sure, maybe I'll keep them for a while, but I'm definitely going to turn them off later for the security reasons. And I think that's it. We'll see you in the next tutorial. It was a pleasure to show you how to do this e easily, and I hope this will be useful for you. So, see you in the next tutorial. Bye, my friends.